Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's been a while since I've been on. I just wanted to come on and just talk about some of the things which are going on at the moment, um, really about the church exposure, because the Lord had been speaking to my heart about this um, particular subject for the last few months, really. And I have a few videos already on there about this subject. But I, in particular, wanted to highlight the one of the original words I got about how God was going to bring exposure um, to this church. I, I already have spoken about how I knew the Lord showed me and spoke to me very clearly and told me this pseudo church culture is finished. It's over. Um, the prosperity system, church, um, all of it is compromised. Church is marketed. Church is over. Um, <clears throat> but there was one prophecy that the Lord gave me that I want to share with you. Because I believe now this prophet prophecy is in season. And I'm just going to jump in here and, and just share, okay? So it is, um, I got this in December 2018. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, um, um, I'm just going to pick part of it because the full prophecy is on another video, which I'll give you reference in a, in a moment, okay? The world has been destroyed because of sin and is drawing onto itself the judgments of God. The secret sins are being judged too. For you never sought me, you never inquired of me, says the Lord, but you allowed wickedness to go unchecked. While the church slept, sorcerers and witches prospered in their magic arts, and you yourself fell captive to bondage when you should have been inquiring of me. So the Lord was warning here that the secret sins are about to be judged so i believe this this is this is the season this is um, the season where this prophecy has been fulfilled i will call you all to account there is no excuse i sent you my word but you twisted it to your own benefit you preached corruption and not my truth your time has come the season has changed you will be judged. You neglected me and now you will see my true colours. Now you will see who you are dealing with. You will no longer blaspheme my name abroad with your fancy rings, your watches, your clothes, your fancy cars and jets masquerading as angels of light. But you are secret devils. Charismatic devils is what I call you. Christianity is so far removed from you. You have destroyed many of my sheep. I hold you to account. I am furious at you. Did you not know who I am? A God of wrath also. You despise me in how you treated my children. You drove them into the wilderness instead of bringing them to a place of safety. Come out, come out from among them, my children. They are blind guides leading you to destruction. Come out of them. They will go down like Korah. Do not remain near their tents. Okay. Um, and, now, and now this as well. I feel God saying, if a pastor be, began to love money more than me, he should have gone back into the marketplace rather than corrupt my church and my people. They bring greater judgment onto themselves for destroying the spiritual lives of my children through their greed. The prosperity of my church is always for the increase of souls into my kingdom. It is for outreach and to help the poor and needy orphans and widows. Instead, my people have robbed the most destitute of society to spend it upon their extravagant lifestyles. These are people that can't put food on the table. Sheep led by sheep are led into ditches. These pastors were never of me, the blind leading the blind. Stay separate, stay pure. My gospel was never one of wealth and money, but the savings of souls. Throw these teachings in the trash. So that was the message I got. And I remember when I got that message, I really struggled with actually putting that message up. Um, I'll tell you what it is actually I'll just give you the original message I posted on January 16th 
2018, or no, it was 2019 I posted it, and it was called Prosperity Gospel, okay? It's got like a, a gold car on the front of the video. Uh, <clears throat> but when I received this, I was re I really thought it was harsh. I thought, whoa, that is really harsh. I don't know if I can put that up on my channel. I kind of struggled with it, and I think I struggled with it because... You know, I used to listen to Jesse Duplantes. I used to listen to um, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, um, Joyce Meyer and more. And so I, you know, so I, I was thinking, oh, this is a very harsh message. But when I got this message, I really, it changed my whole heart around. And I really pulled away from all the prosperity gospel because it, it frightened me. The fear of the Lord came on me through this, you know. And I also want to say that I was reading a video um, called David Wilkerson Calls Out the False Prophet. Um, this is worth watching. It's um, it's by 3N1 channel. So it's 3N for November 1, as in the figure channel. And that's the name, that's the name of it there. David Wilkerson Calls Out the False Prophet. That video... Um, David Wilk Wilkerson released. I it was probably probably twelve years ago or more. I can't. It I doesn't have the exact date when it was delivered, but it really confirms this message that I got from the Lord. And he was such a a prophet from God. I really truly believe that about David Wilkerson. So I just wanted to give you the background on this. Right, I believe this is a pro. That's a prophetic word in season right now because. Some of the prophecies that God gives me, you know, um, it's not in season at the time. And then the season, it comes into season. And even though it was given to me in 2018, I believe that's the season now. I also want to give you a word that I also received last, last yesterday while we were praying. And um, I, when I was praying, I really felt the, the Lord te telling me, that my my tears flow down over my church that my church is flayed and broken is flaying sorry it's flaying and it's broken and the lord says that i will not leave my church in this condition i will heal her breach the lord says i will heal her breach that was the word that the lord gave me and you know the lord um speaks to prophets because he wants to he's not just speaking to condemn he's speaking to give understanding he's speaking to give understanding and i think this is really important to understand that god has given a long rope he gives a long rope like this 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 gospel movement has been going for men it's been going for over a decade possibly nearly two decades at this point and um you know there comes a time where the lord says okay enough's enough now this is the time i'm gonna do something here. I believe this is the time. I believe this is the time God's judging this pseudo Christianity. We need to get back to the Word of God. We need to get back to understanding the full counsel of God, not just this happy clappy Christianity. And this is the problem with the church. It presents a one sided gospel, so that when when um, prophets come and talk about the judgment of God or how or God dis bringing discipline on his church, like people do not know that side of God and they get offended. They get offended and they turn against the prophets and they turn against sometimes even the church. But the Lord disciplines his church. He's going to, he's going to prune, he's going to prune her. He's going to prune all the bad wood off of her. And you know, like I know that revelations have come out about T.D. Jakes and about T.B. Joshua. In particular, the T.B. Joshua, I found this prophecy, that this prophecy that I got was very relevant because it says that, um, where is it? Because of the the weakness of the church. Let me see now. Um, okay, it says, The secret sins are being judged too, for you never sought me. You never inquired of me, says the Lord. So when people say, you know, a lot of there's a lot of believers were swept into the TB Joshua movement thing and now they're baffled as to like, you know, how can this happen? So uh, many of them are uh, many people are in denial. 
about what he he was involved in, which was witch, witchcraft, right? Um, but the Lord says, why didn't you inquire? Why did you not seek me concerning these things? This is what the Lord... But he said, you allowed wickedness to go unchecked. So that is the key right there. Wickedness to go unchecked. When you see pastors abusing other people, when you see pastors robbing the congregations, when you see pastors um, living these lavish lifestyles and taking people off, money off people that have nothing, you know, you've got to ask yourself what is going on here. This is wickedness unchecked. If you see a pastor flirting with a woman or you know or you hear rumors of this pastor having sexual affairs, you know, don't stick your head on into under the sand, you know, ask the questions that need to be asked. You know, we need to walk in truth like we need to walk in truth. It's not just the Bible. The Bible is the truth is the true word of God. But we as Christians must walk in truth and not denial so many Christians want to walk in denial. You know, even Paul said, you know, at one point he said, you know, you accept it when pastors and apostles, they abuse you, they hit you, they, 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 they take advantage of you, they take your money. You know, like Paul said, you know, you will take these abuser, abusers on and you love them, but the apostles that care for your welfare, you reject them. And, you know, this is nearly like what is is really happening. And, um, you know, we're not to be in denial about these things. And we're, neither are we to be in despair. We're not to be in despair. And if we're, if we're walking right with the Lord, we don't need to fear anything. But if we are in sin and if we are hiding sin and if we're putting on, on a mask on the front, but we're living in an alternate lifestyle on on the on the on the backside. We need to come before the Lord and ask for forgiveness and ask for His mercy and ask for for Him to change us from the inside out. What is in the inside of us must come on the outside of us. We are to be, you know, we are to be truthful, utterly truthful. Um, in the Psalm, in Psalm fifty one, if you look at it, it's the repentant Psalm. And it said that God desires truth in the inward parts, in the inward, in the hidden parts. God desires truth. He doesn't expect you as a Christian to just blindly accept everything a pastor does. A pastor is supposed to represent who Jesus Christ is. And if it doesn't reflect or mirror the actions and the lifestyle and the fruit of Jesus Christ, then you've got to ask yourself the hard questions. Is this man walking truly after the spirit of the Lord? What spirit is he operating in? Signs and wonders come from the devil as well. You know, Satan operates in witchcraft. And I'm not saying every spiritual thing, every deliverance and all that is from the devil. It's not because the Lord does do deliverance. The deliverance happens in the church also. Um, it's just that we have to discern the spirit behind it. And if we see um, wickedness going on in the church, we're not, we're not supposed to turn a blind eye. We're to ask questions. We're to ask the hard questions. We are to confront. We are supposed to reprove one another. We are supposed to call each other to account. We are supposed to help each other line up in our lifestyles with the word of God. I mean, if you stay silent and your sister or brother's in fornication, do you think you're doing the right thing? Of course you're not doing the right thing. That is, you're doing the wrong thing. Because the Bible, look, the culture of this world has saturated the church so much that the church has become politically correct. We were just to kick all that political correctness right out the door because the word of God is absolutely first. And, it, you know, it states that, you know, if we see a brother that is walking in sin, it says you go and deliver your brother from that sin, but make sure even you yourself are not being tarnished by the sins, the, the sins that they carry. So we are supposed to um, be our brother's keeper. We are supposed to watch out for our brothers and sisters. We are supposed to tell the truth we are supposed to speak the truth we are supposed to rebuke 
in a, in love, in a gentle way, not in harshness, not in condemnation, you know, but in gentleness, you know, we are, we are supposed to speak out and not just withdraw and be quiet and have no voice and just watch this sin going on around us and, and accepting it and staying in the church and then wondering why the spirit of God is not moving in the church. You know, wondering why things aren't happening, wondering why the preaching is a bit dead. It's, it's not really, it's not full of life. It's not full of the power of the Lord. It's only when we walk in purity, in honesty, in truth, in holiness, when we walk after the word of God and we truly put God first, we truly put God on the altar of our hearts and then we will see the power of God moving. Um, then we will see him moving. Like we have a small little Bible study that we, we do on a Friday. And, um, you know, the always the first thing we do is we give our meeting to, over to the Lord, over to the Holy Spirit, and we check our hearts. We check our hearts and we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's always our starting point. Because if sin is in the camp, the Holy Spirit does not move. He doesn't move. If the pastor is committing fornication or adultery or whatever else or other wickedness the holy spirit is not going to move you're coming in under a deceptive spirit a lying spirit a counterfeit spirit a spirit of religion the spirit of religion is a devil the spirit of religion is a devil the spirit of traditions and religion is a devil it's not the holy spirit it's a counterfeit spirit so I just wanted to um, share that with you. Um, yeah, I have other video. I have other videos. I'll give you the names of them that you can just um, refer to um, if this video doesn't go out on me now. Um, hold on, sorry. Now I just have it here. So one of them is called "Pseudo Christianity and False Doctrines," delivered twenty first of March, twenty twenty two. Have a look at it on my on my playlist. Um, Persecutions to arise, Sandcastle Church to fall on 20 September 2023. And the superstar Christianity is over August 1st, 2023. So there you go. Have a look at those. Um, there are also prophetic videos that I got. Um, yeah, so God bless you guys. You know, um, the Lord is good. The Lord is with us. Um, so be encouraged, stay blessed, stay in his word. And, you know, you will prosper in your way the the, the, the Lord promises um, and the kind of prosperity that we truly as believers want is spiritual prosperity. We want to have a wonderful, living, alive relationship with God and have his grace flowing in our lives, you know, have his love moving in our hearts. And showing mercy and grace and forgiveness to those who come against us um, and just living um, a life for Jesus Christ. It is the most wonderful life. It is the most um, satisfying, joyful life. Um, you know, like there's, there's, there's nothing to compare with living for the Lord, but it's hard. It's a hard one. It's hard. It's, it's not easy in this culture, in this generation. But God gives us his grace. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Speak to you again soon.